problem set two, which includes much of the work that you had quizzes on today on rocket motion, where you're looking at vertical distances, velocities, things that are based on gravity. There's more to it than just that, though. There's a lot more to it. This is on problem set two, which has all different types of problems in it. One of, the, one of the more confusing aspects of acceleration is if you're going around in a circle at the same speed, are you accelerating? If you're going at, around at constant speed, are you accelerating? Well, the answer is yes, because you may be going the same speed, but your direction is constantly changing. And it's constantly changing. So that means that you are accelerating. Now, <clears throat> this is uh, something that we did uh, back in one of, the earlier, uh, one of the earlier movies that I did, where this is going to be a rocket taking off at 100 meters per second. And it goes 0 to 10, and that's the change in altitude based on the equations on the left. Understood? Okay. Well, that's the graph. That's the graph of the rocket. It's an inverted parabola. That's the graph of the rocket. It's an inverted parabola. And you saw what the equation was. That equation was, you may want to stop this and go back and look, but that equation was a quadratic equation. That's what that equation was, very important. This is the data talking about the reduction of velocity going from 0 to 10 seconds, where the ending point is 0. I rewrote the equation as the equation of a straight line where you have the slope, the y-intercept, etc. Now, how do you, what does that look like visually? It would be a straight line slanted from left to right going down. And that is the graph of that. So you will be responsible for understanding the graphical nature of these functions. Now, if this were college physics, you would have to apply calculus to these various quantities. That's the beginning of it. So you, at least you know what the functions are. Now, if I shoot a rocket straight up, what happens? It goes up and then it comes down. If I shoot it at 50 meters per second, how long before it reaches the top, everybody? How many seconds? Five seconds. So how long before it reaches the bottom? 10 seconds total. Five seconds up, five seconds down. See how it's symmetrical? But what are, we, what are we pretending? We're pretending there's no friction. That's the next unit when we do Newton's laws. The world speed skate, speed, the world speed record on water was set on December 8, 1978 by Ken Warby of Blowering Dam, Australia. If Ken drove his motorboat a distance of 1,000 meters in 7.045 seconds. How fast was his boat moving in meters per second in miles per hour? Now, there's actually a YouTube video on this, and you put into the equations uh, velocity equals distance over time, and you'll see that it's going to be 142 meters per second. Now, what would that be in miles per hour? Would it be greater? Would it be less? What would it be in miles per hour? How would you do that? Try to do that. Try to stop the recorder and try to do that yourself. Well, it's going to be 319.5 miles per hour. So you're going to multiply by one mile over 1,600 meters and then multiply by 3,600 seconds over one hour. You see that the you see that the seconds cancel, and so do the meters. Everybody clear on that? Okay, now, next. The next problem will be something fairly basic, 
and it will be according to the World Flying Disc Federation, the world distance record for flying disc throw in the men's 85 years or older category is held by Jack Roddick of Pennsylvania, who on July 13, 2007, at the age of 86, threw a flying disc for a distance of 54 meters. If the flying disc was thrown horizontally with a speed of 13 meters per second, how long did the flying disc remain aloft? Well, there it is right there see that it's going to be moving for 4.2 seconds. It's going to be moving for 4.2 seconds. Clear? 54 divided by 13. Anybody have a question with any of that? No? All right. Uh, we're going to take a break in a moment. Let's do one more slide. And it says a jumbo jet taxiing down a runway receives word that it must turn to the, back to the gate to pick up important passenger who was late into his connecting flight. The jet is traveling at 45 meters per second when the pilot when the pilot received the message. What is the acceleration of the plane if it takes the pilot five seconds to bring the plane to a halt? Those are the three equations that you may or may not have to use. Okay, the first one is TF is zero, the initial velocity is 45, and the time is five seconds. So I want to plug in to that equation, and, and what do I get? Anybody? Can anybody give it to me? The initial velocity is 45, the final velocity is zero. So plug in. What do I got? What's the acceleration? Anybody? Well, let's see. So it's going to be 0 equals 45 plus A5. So it's going to be what? Minus what? Minus 9 what? Meters per second squared. Negative 9 meters per second squared. And that is indeed, that is indeed the case. Minus 9 meters per second squared. Try to do that again. Make up some numbers if you have to. But I want you to do that yourself. Try to find a problem that's similar to that and see if you come up with the same answer. All I'm doing is one of the three basic equations for straight line motion. That's all I used. Clear? Anybody else? No? Clear? All right, let's take a break. A torpedo fired from a submerged submarine is propelled through the water with a speed of 20 meters per second and explodes upon impact with a target 2,000 meters away. If the sound of the impact is heard 101.4 seconds after the torpedo was fired, what is the speed of the sound in water? Now, don't forget that the torpedo, the torpedo has to make it from the submarine to the ship. I'm kind of giving things away by saying this, but it's 100 seconds to get to the target and then 100 point, and then 1.4 seconds for the sound to travel back to the sub. But how do I get that? How do I get that? You see, it's moving 20 meters per second, and if it's going 2,000 meters, it would be, it would be, it would be what? 2,000 meters divided by 20 meters per second would be 100, 100 seconds. And if the sound is heard 101.4 seconds later, then the time for the, the sound to travel, the 2,000 meters, would be would be 1.4 seconds, and that's exactly what the case is. So the speed of sound in water is going to be 2,000 divided by 1.4 seconds, or 1,429 meters per second. So don't forget, the, the torpedo has to travel through the water. That's what it takes most of the time. The torpedo going 2,000 
meters at 20 meters per second, it takes that just 100 seconds to travel. Now, <clears throat> falling object physics, objects in free fall. Uh, great equations for free fall or any other kind of straight line motion. Uh, you would have one for d of t, one for vf of d, and one for vf of t. g and v naught are constant like, and g is going to be 10 meters per second squared. Plus, if it's going down, negative if it's going up. So the first one would be delta d equals v naught delta t plus one half g t squared. Now, that can also be one half a t squared. So that would be the first equation. So even though it says falling object physics, objects in free fall, great equations for free fall, you can also think that these can also be for any straight line motion. The next one is going to be the V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2AD. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2AD. And the last one, VF of T, where VF is written in terms of T, is going to be VF equals V naught plus AT. Again, I wrote the top one, D of T. That means G and V naught are constants or acceleration. The next one was VF of D where V naught and A are constants and V naught and A are constants for the third one. Okay, those are the three major equations that we will be using. King Kong carries Fay Ray up the 321 meter tall Empire State Building. At the top of the skyscraper, Fay Ray's shoe falls from her foot. How fast will the shoe be moving when it hits the ground? How fast will the shoe be moving when it hits the ground? First of all, it's going to bounce on the side of the building because if anybody knows the, the, you know, how the building is put together, it, it can't fall straight down. But anyway, so it's going to be VF of D because I'm comparing, I'm comparing the final velocity with the distance. How fast will it be moving when it hits the ground? How fast will it be moving when it goes 321? meters down. So the equation I'm going to be using is Vf squared equals V naught squared plus 2 AD and because it's starting from rest, i.e. on the foot of Fay Ray, it's going to be <coughs> Vf squared equals 2 AD. Now Solving for the F, taking the square root of both sides, you get, no, well, I'm not taking the square root of both sides yet, my apologies. You have A is going to be G, that's 2 times 10 times 321. Now, the next slide, I will actually be taking the square root of both sides. The square root of VF squared would be just VF. And then the, then the square root of 2 times 10 times 321 is going to be the square root of 2 times 10 times 321. And then when you actually end up taking the square root, it's going to be equal to, let's see, two time, let's see, 10 times 321 is 3,210 times 2, and then take the square root of that, I'm going to have to sl I'm going to have to speed these frames up. This is a little bit too long for individual frames. Would be 80.1 meters per second. Make sure that you can uh, make sure that you can do that equation, do that calculation on your calculator. We'll stop this uh, at the end of this slide, and I will I will. 
change the timing of each of these slides. Okay, see you later. Reverend Northwick climbs to the church belfry one morning to determine the height of the church. From an outside balcony, he drops a book and observes that it takes two seconds to strike the ground below. How high is the balcony of the church belfry? Well, high, how high something is, uh, how long does it take to hit the ground, D of T, obviously. D naught is zero because it's starting from rest. So then you're going to be left with uh, G is positive 10, and that's going to calculate to 20 meters. That'll be 20 meters. All right, next. So 1 half times 10 times 2 squared is 20. Make sure you can do that on your calculator. Next. Uh, how long is Tina, a ballerina, in the air when she leaps straight up with a speed of 1.8 meters per second? 1.8 meters per second. Well, it's going to be VF of T. We know that VF is going to be actually zero. V naught is going to be 1.8. This is going to be G because it has to do with free fall. And G is going to be negative 10. So solving through, solving for T, we get T equals VF minus V naught over G. And then VF is zero. So, so the, this becomes negative V naught over G. G is also negative. So ultimately the time will be, uh, the time will be zero. Uh, the time will be positive. The time will be positive. So here's the equation. Don't forget to plug in for negative G. So it's negative 10. So negative over negative is a positive T again. And we have negative 1.8 over negative 10 is 0.36. Take a quick break. Be right back. Make sure that you see that this is positive. Have a good day and goodbye. Okay, the next problem is going to be in three parts uh, from one of the largest, build, tallest buildings in the world while repairing a defective radio transmitter on the roof of a 442 meter tall Sears Tower in Chicago. Lyle drops his hammer which falls all the way to the ground below. Now, the building in Dubai, the Burj Khalifa, is 800 meters, so it's going to be twice that. And how long will it take for Lyle's hammer to fall? How long will it take? Well, the equation we're going to be using is D of T equation. Uh, and the first term will drop out because you're dropping it from rest and you're left with 9.4 seconds. 9.4 seconds. Now, B is with what speed will the hammer hit the pavement and so you're going to be using the v squared f vf squared equals v naught squared plus 2ad first term drops out from rest and you're left with the equation the square root vf equals the square root of 2ad a don't forget is positive 10 and you get 94 meters per second had you realized that it's from rest, it might have been a little easier for you. How far will the hammer have fallen after 1.5 seconds when a janitor watches it pass outside the office window? So this is going to be C. C, you're comparing distance and time. So you want to come up with the equation for D of T. And that's the same old equation. You should be used to that equation by now. Remember, he's dropping it from rest. So the first term drops out. And then you're left with delta D equals one half GT squared. Uh, plug in the various values and you get 11.25 meters that had fallen in 1.5 seconds. Now the next problem talks about gravity on another planet. Perhaps sometime in the future NASA will develop a program to land a human being on Mars. If you were the first Mars explorer and discovered that when you drop the hammer, it took 0.68 seconds to fall, 0.9 meters to the ground. What would you calculate for the gravitational acceleration on Mars? Okay. So what you want to do is you have to come up with an equation 
that is going to compare the various quantities of distance and time and this is the equation so delta d equals v naught t plus one half g t squared the first term drops out and you're left with delta d or just d equals one half g t squared now in this particular case you have the time and you have the distance so you want to solve for g g equals 2d over delta t squared and you want to plug in those values 0.9 meters and 0.68 seconds squared and you will wind up with a g which is considerably less than that on earth 3.9 meters per second 3.9 meters per second less than half now the next problem in 1945 the enola gay a b-29 bomber dropped the atomic bomb from a height of 9450 meters over hiroshima japan if the plane carrying the bomb were traveling with a horizontal velocity of 67 meters per second how far horizontally would the bomb have traveled between the point of release and the point where it exploded 513 meters above the ground let me explain a little bit about the problem the history of the problem before we actually begin it then after this slide each slide will only be 10 seconds long so you have to keep your wits about you and if necessary press pause or rewind whatever the case may be now this is related to something we're going to be doing in the next unit called projectile motion we're going to be doing chapter five now in projectile motion in projectile motion you have you have uh, an, a projectile being released horizontally and between the combination of the horizontal movement and the increased velocity vertically you get this parabolic shape and you have to understand that we're not talking about friction there's no friction involved here and therefore the horizontal velocity doesn't change the horizontal velocity doesn't change but the vertical velocity will change they're independent of one another and can be analyzed independently however the shape the parabolic shape is is a result of the horizontal velocity remaining constant and the vertical velocity gradually increasing as the vertical distance increases now the bomb is released the path of the Neola gay is a straight line and the the bomb will fall to the ground uh, theoretically right over where it was released unless the unless the plane banks so you have 513 meters it's going to explode uh, before it hits the ground that's where it's going to it has a, a timing mechanism an, an altimeter built in so it's going to fall 8937 8, meters and then if you look at the equation d equals v naught t plus one half g t squared the first term is going to is going to uh, cancel out it's going to be zero and so you're left with d equals one half g t squared and you want to solve for you're going to ultimately want to solve for t in other words how long is it going to take that bomb to fall the time in which it takes the bomb to fall vertically is the same time it takes the ball the ball the bomb to go horizontally so t equals root 2 times 8,937 divided by 10 and you'll find that the time it takes the bomb to fall vertically is the same time it takes for it to go horizontally to where it will explode above 513 meters above the ground so the answer is 42.3 the bomb will free fall at that rate and the bomb will go forward 42.3 meters again you see that the horizontal velocities remain constant and it's the vertical velocity uh, that's going to increase according to the acceleration due to gravity so 
doing the calculations d for dx the bomb will fall forward 2834 meters now the the plane has to bank out of the way so it has 42 minutes 42 seconds to get out of the way and it will by several miles and everybody is, is okay on the plane uh, it's an unfortunate historical event but something that we can learn from relative to straight line motion curved motion projectile motion linear motion etc okay uh, this problem is going to become very very important it's going to be one third of the next chapter so make sure you can do this particular problem and there's a problem that corresponds to this that's on youtube where i do the problem out and have a good day and goodbye